the point is if you can be there for somebody, do it because you have no idea how much of a difference you make in their life. You should be the strongest man at your father's funeral. Sometimes the best nights or days out are times where you really don't want to go and for whatever reason you push yourself to go. Mm. Something inside you like, ah, I really don't want to attend this, but I'm going to do it. Some of the most fun nights I've ever had, I've met some of the best people that way. I really do believe that intuitively people who love us know when is you know when it's getting time for them to go mm. and how they can either help us or guide us or support us while they're here. What is a friend and a friend is someone that challenges you someone that isn't envious of you someone that dude there's just so many factors to what an actual friend is that this i think is born in 92 on the block with the sharks come from a different cloth y'all would get ripped apart you want a diamond then you gotta get it in the dark we dropping nuggets like carmelo went to rock the bar now we eat it from state to state, we scrape the plate I put my eggs in the basket, took a leap of faith I took a chance, now we grow and see the impact Decoding success with special guests, now let's bring Matt Hey everyone, welcome back to the top 1% globally ranked podcast, Decoding Success Excited to be back in the studio with the boys today before diving in, a few housekeeping items that I just want to put out there for everyone. First and foremost, we received a plethora of feedback from the last in-studio. I know Anaresis was letting me know. Phil was letting me know. We have one more. Uh, one more of the, the gents are back. So we're going to get to that in a second. But I just wanted to let you know that we appreciate hearing that feedback. And if you want more of these episodes, we want to give you more. Just let us know. Uh, on top of that... Episodes are totally free, but if there was a fee, and yes, I am stealing this from Andy Frisella because I love it so much, mm -hmm. but sharing these episodes mean the absolute world to us. What we're diving into is just heartfelt conversation between four guys. We have a really good time doing it, and the more and more we spread this message. By the way, March of 2023 was the most downloaded month in podcast history which is almost five years running. So thank you to everyone that is sharing and we encourage you to continue to share. Uh, on that note, if you prefer to watch, you could check us out on YouTube. And lastly, gonna give a quick shout out to Proper Sleep and Talkify. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see their logos behind me. But boys, we're back. Phil Massia, Andrew Meditz, Anna Reeses. What's going on, boys? How are you guys doing? Excellent, excellent, bro. It's good to be back. I'm glad Absolutely. to have our boy with yeah, Bro, it's been right. a wow, fucking minute. I got minute. jealous when I listened to the last one, I'll be honest. I put it on while I was working out. I was like, fuck. <laughs> you know, some shit came up. I couldn't make it. So I'm just happy to be back. No, it's, it, glad it's, to have it's you, man. glad to have you. Definitely glad to have you. I mean, we had a really good time here last time. I mean, didn't even feel like an hour, right? No, it didn't. It was the first time in how long that we had done this. I think the last time was a Drew's I just think it, it was a year. It had to have been a year and a half. Longer, I think we said that on the pod. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it had yeah. to have been closer to a year and a half, which... It's crazy to think of how fast the time goes and obviously within that time period and we kind of discussed this on the last pod like all of us have had such tremendous growth and experiences that at times might have knocked us down got back up triumphs all of that shit you know so yeah to to fill you i mean i haven't seen you guys really since since i got married I know you guys brought that up actually on the last podcast. But yeah, true. man, that was yeah, yeah. a fucking that was a fucking great wedding. Yeah, man. that was the last time I actually saw you boys. I uh, I had a crazy just to fill. Uh, I mean, just to kind of catch up. I mean, I know you guys know this, but to kind of fill you in, uh, I had a crazy uh, even just call it let's say end of 2022. So I I had gotten married November 30th. Um, all that led up to the wedding, crazy stress, right? Um, crazy build up. Mm -hmm. Then an incredible party, incredible experience. Everything worked out perfectly. Uh, went on like my little mini moon with my mm -hmm. with my wife. Um, we actually just planned, and I'll appreciate this. We actually just planned the real honeymoon in Greece. Nice. Respect. Yeah. So <laughs> we'll, we'll catch up after this. Why is well. Greece always getting yeah. a shout out on this <laughs> podcast? Yeah, well, I don't get it. I don't get it. Not even five minutes. Yo, in, right? all of the yeah. Greeks that listen to this, send uh, it to your family yeah, over there. Not even five minutes we in. Do, he gets a, Yeah, he got a shout out. This guy. Uh, <laughs> I was hoping not to do that till later. <laughs> but. Uh, so uh, so we did a little uh, mini moon and then uh, actually I'd gotten back and then actually the last time I was on the podcast with you guys about a year and a half ago, I talked about my dad was diagnosed with uh, stage four lung cancer. So he actually would, had been doing really well, um, just incredible fighting throughout the entire thing, fought through the chemo, was kicking ass. Um, and then even at the wedding, which was kind of crazy, um, 
like everybody was coming up to me like, oh, your dad looks incredible. I know you guys even said that mm-hmm. like at yeah. that point, right? Yeah. Like yeah. he looked incredible. He was having a good time, smiling, had a great time. Literally, as soon as I got back from the honeymoon, um, it was at, around that time, if you remember, where everybody was getting sick. Like it was either COVID or, so he actually uh, got RSV and then that turned into bacterial pneumonia and then he just never really made it out of the hospital at that point. So I went from like being like the super high of the wedding mm. to like, to like really just like crashing literally within, it wasn't even 30 days later, you know? So it was just mm-hmm. like a crazy bunch of emotions for me. Um, so since then, like, you know, I had a good amount of time to kind of reflect on it now. It's been about three months or so. Um, you know, there's a little bit of closure with it now too. Um, I'm able to kind of refocus a little bit too, to start focusing on work, which has been a great distraction. But like 2022 was just like a wild ride for me. Like so much happened. I got engaged, I got married, and then my pops <laughs> passed away and I moved, Damn, yeah. which is like crazy. Yes. And I moved from yes. the city to, to a house out in Long Island. So it was just like a wild, like I felt like that one year was like 10 years 20, of my yeah. life. Phil said the yeah. same thing. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah, yeah we kind of had a similar yeah. experience. Yeah, it was like 2022 was wild. Absolutely. Every How two did, years yeah. feels like 10 to me. Yeah. How did you uh, surf the waves of all of that, man? Like. So uh, did you feel like you were surfing? Did you feel like you were crashing? Like, what was the deal? It was so it's so weird. I think even like Phil actually mentioned this, um, I think even on the last podcast, which is just like you have to appreciate like the highs and the lows of life and just kind of go fully into them, mm-hmm. whether it's the the highest of getting married and having the time of your life to again, like dealing with your father's passing and, you know, depression and all that kind of that comes with it and mourning and the anger and the whole process. Um, and just realizing like this is part of the human experience and it's just kind of the, the hand that we're dealt being human beings and uh, like my my dad's death was crazy too because me and my mom were in the hospital when he coded which was like crazy so he literally coded in front of us like had a heart attack while we were in the hospital flatlined had to grab my mom pull her out like holding her while they're doing compressions like it was wild um, and like, like try to, and like you go through the emotions of like when you're in the hospital, was there anything else you could have done? And you play the guilty card a little bit. Like, I wish I could have done more. Was there something I could have said or done differently? Um, like I know even, I think, I, I think Connie might've even reached out to you, Matt, about John Edwards. Cause I was like, yeah, of, she did. She did. I was like going through it a little bit where I was like kind of looking for like somewhere to reach out to him to see if there was something that I could have done more like, and you wrestle with that for a while. I feel like I finally got through that. Um, I think I even left you a voice note. I forgot who I had spoken to about this. Um, but uh, he actually came to me in a dream, which super, like, really helped me kind of with closure with the whole thing. Yeah, in the um, garage. Yeah, so uh, I, my dad was, like, super handy, which is, like, the opposite of what I am. Like, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Probably all of us. I, I, this entire generation. <laughs> I, I was having trouble with the tripod. Uh, so. <laughs> right? Like, it I took feel two like, of us. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I feel like, like, even when I was a kid, like my dad would like try to encourage me. I don't know if you guys had the same experience. Like he would try to encourage me to like learn. And mm-hmm. then I would like hold the flashlight for like 30 Always. seconds. <laughs> right. And then like, just be like, okay, like yeah. I'm going to go back to whatever I was doing. So like, I never really learned. So like now that I have a house, you have no choice. You kind of thrust into it. Yeah. Uh, so I actually, I needed something. Um, I'm actually, I was setting up uh, my, my, the gym in my garage, which I fortunate enough to kind of have, which has been awesome. We'll get into maybe that a little later. Um, <laughs> And I needed like a, a socket wrench set. So I went to my dad's, I went to my parents' house to go get his. And it's like this old school lunchbox, like mm. <laughs> literally like out of like a time warp, like literally a time machine. Like you can't even get anything like this at Home Depot. Like, and it just like screams of him. And like, I was in the garage and I was like touching all his stuff was still there. It was like a museum to him. And like all his tools are there and stuff. And I, I literally just spent like 20 minutes there. Like I sat in his chair that he has in the garage. Like I just kind of like took it all in, you know? And then that very night he actually came to me and I, it was weird too. Like I was putting together stuff with my brother-in-law in the garage. And like, I don't know, I kind of felt like accomplished almost like, I wish my dad could see me putting shit together. Yeah. Kind of right? Like almost like, like, uh, like I, he wouldn't believe this. He'd probably be like laughing. Like, I can't believe this is like happening. And, um, and like, I just kind of felt his presence. And then that night, uh, had a dream. Um, it was weird. We were both in my garage. Um, then something clicked in my head where it was like, I realized that he had passed. Mm. Um, and then he was actually holding his rock, his uh, socket wrench set, which was like crazy. 
And then like I ran over to him like a little kid and gave him a hug. And, like right before I got to him, like and was actually able to touch him, which apparently is like a thing, um, which my wife was telling me about. Like, I don't know, like um, after a certain amount of days after you pass, you can't really touch the living in dreams or something like that. But like right before I went to touch him, that's when like I woke up. And then like I just felt like closure from that. Wow. It was like crazy, yeah. So I went from like, again, like the highs and the lows of everything. Um, and like, again, uh, even to kind of tie it all together, um, like we, we speak about this all the time too. Like every, we always are preach like things happen for a reason in life. Um, and I truly believe that like me and my wife had broken up for a little bit so I could have time to kind of deal with that stuff that I had to deal with, deal with stuff that she had to deal with. But then like we got back together just in time because I needed to be a rock for my mother Mm -hmm. And she was a rock for me, which if I didn't have her, I don't know how I would have gotten through that whole process. Yeah. You know, and like I'm super grateful that like she was there for me because again, I have no idea how I could have done that without her. So like the, when we talk about like the highs and the lows and like how I got through it and everything, it's just like everything just kind of happens for a reason is the best thing that I can kind of say. Yeah, you know? man. I know there's no way of knowing that. That's kind of what I was wondering earlier when you were talking about your journey and what you've been through. So I know there's no way of knowing, but just knowing what you know now, how do you think you might have handled things differently if you weren't with the, you know, the right partner or the person that really kind of is your rock? It's hard to say, right? But um, um, like Jordan Peterson said this, which is, um, you should be the strongest man at your father's funeral, right? Which you were. Uh, which yeah, you were. Thank you. Thank you. Like I, I give you a lot of credit for how composed you were at that at that wake. Um, I, I, I remember I embraced you with a hug and I started to cry. I'm like, yo, I think I needed this maybe just as much as Drew did. Hmm. And uh, I was like, yo, like I, I walked away from it. I'm like, yo, like Drew is very composed. Like you were 100% that guy. And I think I was able to do that because I could then go home and then be vulnerable with my wife as my rock, mm -hmm. right? It's like I could hold my mother up and not show anything and just be composed and deal with the the arrangements and deal with the details and deal with everything. By the way, I mean, dealing with like, oh, I, I don't know if you guys have ever done this, but like the wake details and stuff, like it's, no, I never have. it's a lot. It's like yeah. crazy to deal with. can imagine. Yeah, it's like wild. Like it's like, I never was like, I've never been that close to it, but like having to go through all those details and everything, it's- All at once too. Yeah, it's crazy. I, I feel so bad for anybody who has to go through that. But um, even the photo collage, you know, it was- Oh, well oh that was out. fantastic, yeah. dude. Yeah. That, those photos of your dad were incredible. That, that was my, those were my sisters and my wife who put that whole thing together. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was pretty cool. Those were really awesome. Yeah, they did a good job. There was a couple of shirtless pics of you though. I, I, I put those in. I <laughs> I, I made sure that the one of me in college with a six pack when my dad was with me at a swim meet was in there. You know, to make sure. I like that. I like yeah. that. Yeah. I, uh, I, it was funny. You weren't the only person who said that. <laughs> there were multiple people who came up to me at the wake and were like, huh, interesting. You put some shirtless photos of you and your right. dad. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, yeah, but I, I think ultimately, again, it was, it's, uh, it's, you kind of, I think I needed that in order to be in that position. I don't think I would have been able to be as put together. Somebody else might've had to step up in all honesty. Yeah. Um, if I didn't have kind of that support system behind me, you know, right. Absolutely. there's a lot to deal with because the worst parts about that are when you're, it's not when you're at the house with all the food and everybody, or when you're, or when you're distracted to wake or whatever, it's like the moments alone is when you really feel that shit. Mm -hmm. Like when you're not at work and you have the next day off and you're just like, you're left with your thoughts and memories and, and like I even said guilt, which was weird. Like that was a weird thing, but it's part of the mourning process too. Like having guilt about what I could have done, like all that is when it was really the worst. It's like when I was absolutely alone with my thoughts, you know? How do you feel now? Um, it's weird too. Um, my, now it's more like my, listen, my parents, my dad died when he was 68 and he was with my mom. They were dating since they're 16. So it's 50 years mm -hmm. together. Holy shit. When you think wow. about that, right? Like, I don't know. I mean, how long have your parents been together? Probably similar, right? I would imagine. Um, 30, well, I'm on air now, but 35, yeah. 35. So yeah. Right. Rob's going to give you a spanking. <laughs> that wrong. No, I don't know. I'm going to yeah. get it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, I mean, it's like, it's all they, they only knew each other for 50 years. Like, that's crazy to think about. I've known mm -hmm. my wife for four years. Yeah. Like, it's insane to think about. So like now it's, 
it's yeah. like kind of you know now it's you know a lot of attention going towards mom and just making sure like mom's okay yeah um and she's going through her own kind of thing but i think now the way that i'm dealing with it is i think for me anyway 2022 was spent around a lot of like um preparing for the wedding and dealing with family and kind of that whole thing and like now 2023 and i think it's funny because i heard this on the podcast and like i refocused energy back on myself because i was mm-hmm. giving out a lot mm-hmm. elsewhere in 2022 and i started to feel it like getting out of routines not meditating not working out um like and it was just kind of taking its toll on me so like now i've gotten back into more of my routines and meditation in the morning and working out a lot more and cold showers and kind of just refocusing back on work also like saying no to things <laughs> right yeah. like yeah. stuff that i don't necessarily have time or really want to do and kind of realizing that's okay so i think now for 2023 i've kind of put a little more energy back on myself to kind of just realign so that I can kind of continue, you know, where I was at before, because a lot of energy was going out elsewhere, um, and and again, like even working through this stuff with my dad, um, like was was uh, was like it's weird. It kind of culminated in that dream where I was like, you know, you speak. I spoke to other doctors too, and it's like, listen, there was nothing that you could have done. He actually he actually died from an internal bleed from the medication that he was on. It wasn't okay. even necessarily yeah. the lo- his lungs that did it. Yeah. But having spoken to another uh, doctor friend that we have, like he was like, just you, what you need to, because I was like, the next day I was like t- talking to every doctor, trying to realize like, was there anything I could have done differently? You know, um, it was mostly like, listen, you just have to realize he died from the lung cancer. Like that might have been the cause, but that's what he died of. And you just need to wrap that around your brain right. and realize whether it was now, sadly, or whether it was in whatever time, there was nothing that you could do to change those circumstances. Yeah, it's tough, man. I mean loss in general it's crazy because i I texted aunt this morning i I was hysterical in tears legit just this morning Mm -hmm. i was at the park and i that's like this is my way of giving you so much credit because this was your dad like this was this this is your dad yeah and this morning i was at the park i I told myself you know what i just wanted to go for a walk today so i did exactly that i parked my car and i noticed a guy in front of me in a mercedes-benz get in the car frantically and then drive through the park. And I'm like, this isn't a park that you drive through. Like, what do you like? What is this guy doing? He reverses onto the grass and I'm, my view is blocked by a tree. So I get out of the car and I'm about to start my walk. And then I look at what's going on. And as he's reversing, I see that there's a girl that I know who owns two dogs that my dog plays with. So I start walking towards them. And then I see another gentleman kind of like holding himself up on the fence. Like it's a, um, you know, one of those linked fences that you could put your hands through. Mm. And I'm like, oh, I recognize him too, a kid from the neighborhood. And I get closer and closer and I'm like, what's going on? I look down and his dog is dead. Oh, wow. Mm. Dude, I sent Anne a video. Uh, I think the tears are out, bro. I walked around the entire park crying the entire Ugh. time. Did you have Draco with you? I didn't have Draco with me. Um, Thankfully, because he would not be peaceful, you know, in that moment. Um, What happened to the dog? The dog must have choked. The the dog was a little bit on the older side. And from what it seems, that's what was the cause. Um, But literally at the park, dude. And like, that's not something you want to see. Especially you own a dog. You've lost a dog. Your family owns a dog. Like, dude, that really, really hit home. Um, So loss is never easy. And one thing that actually stood out to me this morning was, and this is, you know, a conversation with four guys. We have another gentleman in the room. Like, one thing that I really noticed in that moment was the desire to embrace the person that owned that dog who was a gentleman um you know him very well uh he's always at the park and i just looked at him i'm like yo this guy just lost someone like i i'm gonna give this guy a hug in front of everyone i don't care what this looks like like am i close with him no i'm not like do i say what's up to him yeah but i'm like yo man like i had tears in my eyes tears rolling down my face and i just said dude like come here gave him a hug gave him a warm embrace and after it he hit me up and he was like, yo, thank you for being there. Mm. You know, like we've never even talked on social media before. And that was the response that was given back. But dude, it's just, it, it's not easy, man. It's weird too. I think when, when it comes to the type of mourning and stuff too, you're surprised to by 
it brings the community together and also like even people you haven't seen in a long time like right. we were shocked to see certain people at the wake and and who made the trip from where and you know like people from you haven't seen in like 10 years who here and then mm-hmm. show up like it's weird how no, even a situation like yourself like you can you know you being there for that person means a lot you yeah. know and i think that's that's one thing too that's weird about this you know human experience is uh sometimes death can bring people closer together too it can it's funny because phil talked about this the last time we were here and it, it leads me to believe like these people while distant like we can't be in everyone's life at every waking moment you yeah. know but yeah. they really are in our life yeah they're, they're there and um sometimes distractions get in the way life gets in the way but they're there and they come they come through when you need them to be there I didn't actually know we were going to go down this, but it's actually pretty fitting. This morning, I had a conversation that, it was a tough one. Um, you, you know Kirby, the gentleman I was, you know, yeah, I was taking care very of for well. a while. So I, I had a, um, and first off, I just want to say, the way you dealt with everything was like extraordinary. Oh, Absolutely. Thank you. And like, thank you guys. You, we, you know, you've been a fantastic example. That's the power of being in like a growth minded circle that like, I think one of the four of us are going to experience something at any given time that the other ones can learn from. So maybe I go through something that you haven't yet, or you go through something. So it's like that in itself is just so powerful. And the crew wouldn't be the crew with one of the four not being in it. So. Yeah, and I think what's great, what's incredible for me with having you guys in my life too is also too, like I can reach out to you guys for advice on certain things too. And I don't feel like I have to, you know, like if I'm going through some shit, I can reach out to you and kind of get your opinion on it. Because maybe you've been through it before, or you have something, a really good piece of advice to kind of offer me. Which yeah. is incredible. That's the, yeah, that's the power of community, man. Um, I did an episode with Connor Beaton. He has a platform called Man Talks, and it really made me realize what a friend is. Like, w- what a friend is. Like, what is a friend? And while I can sit here and say, and we we all can, like we we know a lot of fucking people. Like each and every one of us. Like us four right here. I mean, between a Greek, between... <laughs> so much more than that. <laughs> <laughs> That's all you got. <laughs> no, but like, Greek community is huge. Like, people that were in nightlife. Like, someone that owns successful businesses. Like, dude, like, we know a lot of fucking people. But yeah. <laughs> what is a friend? And a friend is someone that challenges you. Someone that isn't envious of you. Someone that... Dude, there's just so many factors to what an actual friend is. That this, I think, is brotherhood. You know that that's what it is. It's brotherhood. Like there, there's no, hey, I need to hit you up. Like I'm, I'm really going through it today. I'm gonna hold back a little bit. Like it, there's none of that. You know? Yeah. yeah I actually, uh, I would love to share the story of Kirby. I know, I know he's listening, so he'll be smiling when he hears this. I had a uh, my second like on the books job. I was at a gym. I was 18 years old. Didn't really know much about, you know, business, gym, all that stuff, selling shakes, memberships. A guy comes in. We had a classroom upstairs, and it was, classrooms didn't work. It was like a failed program. Mm. So what are we going to do with the room? So um, guy comes in, and he rents it out, $400 a month, sleeping on an air mattress. and Oh, doing, to live. To live, to live. Taking showers. It was a three-floor gym. You had to walk downstairs to go to the locker room. So he's taking showers in the locker room. And I just remember at that point, he was like, I don't know, maybe like 55 years old. So just drumming up conversation, getting to know him and hearing his story. Used to bodybuild, used to be in the army, had two uh, marriages. He's got ex, you know, I think I think he has three, three children, yes. And uh, just hearing his story, same thing. I was able to empathize. I'm 18. At that point, I don't have much money to my name. I don't have really much value, but I can empathize because, like you say, we're all one. It's a human experience. So I'm talking to him. Fast forward, we would work out. We became really best of friends. I looked at him like an older, it's just an older guy that's sort of a mentor or just someone to learn from. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, he made these mistakes or he had these successes, and here I'm learning from them. And we would spend, like, as you know, like, almost every day together you know and I did so because he had no family in his life and I actually invited him to Thanksgiving my I remember my family at first thought I was nutty but I was like <laughs> but I was like we need to invite this guy he has no family like yeah. we're yeah. blessed like Thanksgiving is a soup bowl at our house yeah how much food we have like this guy 
it's gonna sit home, no food, no nothing. So we did, and then everybody was getting closer to him. So this gentleman, I saw him pick up in his health because his health was declining. He was a strong SOB. Like Absolutely, this, I've this, worked out with him. This guy's 65, he's squatting two plates, benching, like he's an animal. Well, um, what what's crazy is, and I felt really bad about this too, and asking myself the same questions, but so I was, I was helping him with his, you know, living, his finances, his health. And then uh, he just, right before COVID, he just, with the pandemic, he went into an assisted living facility and then not being able to see anybody over those two years. And on average about, and I was checking on him, on average about one person in that facility was dying per week. So your environment is everything. So yeah. he's, just, he's just seeing that and uh, started to go down. So I, he got moved to a facility, went to go visit him. I remember just how much being there for someone matters because when I went there, there was literally no one there mm -hmm. visiting anybody in the place. And when I walked in, it was like I was Santa Claus, you know? <laughs> and he seen me, took him a few seconds to realize who I was. At that point, you know, he wasn't the same mentally. And um, I remember I brought him into the sunroom at Florida Ceiling Windows. And uh, I said to him, let's get a little light. And he said, he said to me, uh, no, don't, don't do that, don't do that. And he was really scared. And I was like, why? And he said, yes, the bomb's going to go off if you do that. And I had realized at that point he was having flashbacks of the army. And I opened up the window. And when I did, I'm like, it's okay, Curve. Like, it's okay. Open up the window. As soon as I did, you know how sometimes you said this once to me in the past. Like, sometimes people don't say the words but you see it in their eyes, he was just truly embarrassed. Mm. And I felt I felt for him. So fast forward, having gone through that experience, but just kind of being there for someone, curve, long story short, um, I found out three weeks after my son was born that he had passed, and I felt really bad about it. Fuck. I felt really, really bad about it because I wasn't able to be there for him. Um, I remember when I was calling up the facilities and the hospital, I don't have his, you know, the same last name, I'm not blood. Legally, they can't tell me what's going on. So I found out three months after, so I felt really, really bad. I was going through new father, um, you know, new neighborhood, new family members, and then like, oh damn, because I, pr I remember I told him, I'm like, I promised him, because he, he didn't have, you know, any money. I said, I'll throw you a, you know, a wake. So I, f like, I felt like mm. real, real bad at that point. Mm. But at the same time, um, you do what you can for people while they're there. Just like you hugged that guy. That's what gave me the, you know, yeah. the perspective of the story. And I'm at the gym this morning. The reason why I say this all, I'm at the gym this morning in Glendale, where we used to work out. Just came today for a one day pass. And someone asked me how he was. So I told them the story. And just crazy timing how mm. it goes from this to this to this. But the point is, if you can be there for somebody, do it. Because you have no idea how much of a difference you make in their life. Yeah. And that's one, like, we talked about earlier, you know, people showing up, right, to um, Drew's Pops' uh, wake. And they might have come from out of town. They, they travel a long way. And that one day out of their life that they said, you know what, it's far, but we're going to pay our respects, that forever changes the relationship that you have with those people. And that gesture that they made, even though it was one day of their life, you, you know what, it's far, it's traffic, it didn't matter because that was, like, the ultimate showing of love that they could have given you and yeah. your family and your father so it's the things like you did right inviting him over for uh for thanksgiving did Those he come are... for thanksgiving by the way he did he awesome did. and i made sure i gave him extra leftovers he was there <laughs> he, was, like, he was just so surprised because he's literally when you don't have the financial means you know how it is you have a small little plate and like you come in and you see like the spread that goes for like 30 feet so. and like I was like, yeah, eat up, man. Take, take, but yeah, no, That's he, awesome. he came and the camaraderie, the community of it was the biggest thing more than the food. Absolutely. Always. And go ahead. My bad. I didn't mean to cut you off. No, all good, man. I was just talking about, you know, small acts of gratitude, how, you know, they seem small when mm. you're doing them. You're like, ah, it's just a small thing I can do. But look, everyone's giving examples of the impact that it's made by someone's small act of gratitude, which. Well, you're on the, you're, you're in the hot seat now. We, we all shared a story. Well, actually, I was going to go in a different direction because I wanted to actually touch on something that Drew said with uh, the power of the dream that he had. That was kind of that's been on my mind mm. since he said it. I'm interested in this it. too. Yeah, um, I think there's such Love power behind that. Um, I know people will talk about a dream they had, 
oftentimes, and they'll talk about it for the rest of their lives. Like I had a dream that uh, you know this person visited me, or this conversation happened, and they don't, they never forget it. Um, one specific, I know my dad, um, my dad's dad, um, passed away before my dad even met my mom, and my dad was always kind of wondering, oh, I wish you know he met my wife, I wish they had a chance to meet, and I would would he have been happy, you know, all all these things that kind of ran through his mind. And in a dream, uh, several years after they got married where he came into the house, walked in, and he's saying, Dad, Dad, he's trying to like catch him, catch his attention, he's just on a mission. And he's like, Dad, he's trying to get to him. Basically walks into the house, walks up the stairs, walks to their bedroom where there's a picture of my mom and my dad at their wedding, kisses the picture, again, oh, tries wow. to grab him. As soon as he's about to grab him, kind of like Drew was saying about like, you cannot touch them for whatever reason. Yeah. As soon as he's about to touch them, dream over, wakes up, cold sweats that's exactly what happened heavily. to me yeah right. how, that's exactly how, what happened to me so i think there's Holy so shit. much yeah to that now this is the example that you shared and the shamper the example i just shared about my dad is on a much higher level i've had some dreams some very vivid dreams about people that were in my life that haven't passed away but i actually kind of strangely explained some things like a person i was with i had a dream just you know it's like ah if you could only change this we can we can be together and basically the dreams the message was in this lifetime, I will not be able to change this. Mm -hmm. So no matter that's even, what they said to you. Correct. In this lifetime, in this lifetime, hmm. I will not be able to overcome this and change this. So this is not something I will ever get over. It's not something I will ever fix, even if we worked on it together. I'm like, wow, it's so interesting. And I strangely got a lot of clarity from that. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, a, a very good friend of mine, shout out Christina Mavronos. Uh, <laughs> she is very deep as well, and she is like she. Just like we do, right? We share recommendations of podcasts or shows. Always we recommend this podcast. But <laughs> I was about to say. <laughs> just this one. Um, and our lovely sponsors as well. But uh, no, she had mentioned to me, she's like, if you want a deep read that changed my life, she goes, read this book. And if you guys have read it, let me know. It's called Many Lives, Many Masters. Have yeah. you guys? No, I haven't. Yeah. Long story I'll short. Too. Yeah, long story short, here's like the gist of it. So it's based on a true story, an interaction with a psychiatrist and his patient that he put under hypnosis that went from, for some pretty routine things, some anxiety, some you know, some nervousness, um, some slight fears, and he took it pretty deep with her, and he, they did this, um, they did this, the, this hypnosis, and without saying it, she was of like, you know, average intelligence. But when he had these conversations, he's like, I'm speaking to somebody else, and there's no way that she knows these places, these places in history, these references. Like, she just doesn't have that capability. And this is before the internet, so where is she getting this stuff from? What he found was, through this person, that she they were tapping into past lives that she had lived. Mm -hmm. And it was so interesting because a lot of the people in her past lives, like let's just say, for example, her mother current day was her sister in a past life so a lot of the people that we see in our lives have been in our lives our past lives before so you know sometimes you meet someone and there's an instant connection you're like oh yeah, yeah. like there's 100%. some there's something here immediately and you can't quite explain it well this book kind of dives a bit deeper on that and uh there's a lot to it um one thing i will say is like we're all very well read here Sometimes I'll, I'll read a book and I'll be like, oh, there's some great points here, but it didn't change me as a person. This absolutely changed my outlook on death and the afterlife. It's worth it just for that read, right? And it talks about just higher spirits after a life, like you, you come into your life, it ends, and it's not necessarily scary, like you then go somewhere else. And you're, and again, depending on your religious beliefs, whatever, that's, that's up and turned up for interpretation but basically you're reincarnated into another person and you keep going through this journey of life until you kind of get it until you mm -hmm. figure out some life lessons and then when you get there when you so to speak like graduate then you go to nirvana or wherever the next place is but i bring all this up to say they have this segment about dreams and the power of people who still want to reach out still want to let you know like i'm thinking about you i'm with yeah. you they do come to you in dreams and it got I got chills reading that and I got chills when Drew said it as well um, mm -hmm. so I firmly do believe that your pops wanted to you yeah. know, make his presence 100%. known let you know he was proud of you you know seeing you with the his tools and all that so yeah. th there's something to that yeah it's, we it's weird I've had two other people pass who were close to me both were friends 
and both of them I had the same experience where they came to me in dreams after so I think there's something there for me anyway personally where it's like it's I don't know there's there's something there where there's a connection after the fact and I felt the same way after all three which is exactly what you said I wake up and it's like no other dream I've had before I have like the chills um, like I'm sweating a little bit and I in my mind I'm like that was not a dream Mm. It was three times that that's happened to me where I was like, that was not a dream that actually happened. And it was all three times. Uh, one was my friend Joe, one was my friend Billy, and the other one recently was my father. So weird. All three the same experience. Wow. You know what's interesting? I knew your perspective on afterlife, and it's totally different from, yeah. like, totally, yes. totally different. Because I, I, I've said to you, I think I've said it to all three of you uh, in the past. I worked with a woman named Sonia Chalquette, and I was put on to her. She was actually on this show. Uh, she's known as like the queen of intuition. I was put on to her after a holiday party when I was working with Damon John. Um, me and my buddy Frank Kachiabev were in a Uber going to our own after party. And um, dude, I was whacked. And he's, <laughs> he's telling me about like him on this call with this woman Sonia and like what she said about his life and his past lives. So I'm like, dude, like let's just get to the place and have another drink. Like, I don't even know what you're saying, but, um, I had a call with her and she really shifted my perspective on past life as well, because what she knew nothing about me outside of my name. Like, I don't even think she knew my birthday. Uh, maybe she knew that, but like, that was literally it. And she said, the first thing she said to me was Matt, you're an old soul. Like those were the first words out of her mouth and continued to say that your soul has traveled far, um, far and wide, meaning horizontally and vertically. Horizontally is from place to place. Vertically is from like profession to profession. And then she started to name the professions. Then she goes, once she did all of that, she goes, what do you do for a living? And I said, well, um, you know, I host a podcast and I own a business. And she goes, do you see any alignment? And the profession she had said were teacher, salesman, and like a couple other things. And it was like really fucking spot on, like scary spot on. But I mean, our souls travel, man, you know, I don't know where. I remember you told me that that was, and it was wild. I was in full blown tears that entire call, like full blown tears. Cause it was wild. As um, as you guys are talking about this, so many things are popping up in my head. That's wild um, along the same trajectory. But two quick stories about. I really do believe that intuitively, people who love us know when is you know when it's getting time for them to go, mm. and how they can either help us or guide us or support us while they're here. One was uh, shout out to Anthony Mandola. I'm Mandola. So we're in, <laughs> we're, we're in Sicily. He's never been there in his entire life, you know, and he's very hardcore Italian. And we go to Sicily 2017. We visit um, the town where his grandfather's from. Walk in, you know, poor town, but still such beautiful architecture everywhere. He's the barber. Everybody's coming up to him. Your grandfather cut my hair, you know, 50 years ago. Crazy. So we're like, you know the paparazzi in the town when we when we his grandmother wasn't doing well and she wasn't doing well for a while and as soon as we got there and then we had a long long dinner super like crazy crazy big dinner 50 people right. she hooked it up for us and everything his aunts and uncles everything the next day his grandmother had passed oh wow and he while you he, were there yeah while we were there holy shit. he intuitively knew that she was holding on. He always said, I want to meet my family in Italy, but he, he hadn't done so. And we got there and it literally happened. And another, another story was my grandmother. My grandmother, uh, my dad's mother, she was not doing well for a while, like the last five years, literally, you know, just what was no longer there anymore. Living but not living, get what I'm saying? And, um, I remember the week before my son Luca was born, she um, she was showing signs of not eating like for days, and they thought like that's it. So much so that my, my dad's brother he flew up from Florida to come, you know, say his last words. He flew up, literally the next day she just you know starts eating again, and she's mm -hmm. good. She's like peppy, right? Five days later, Luca's born. Three days after he's born, 
my grandmother passes. Oh wow. She just I know, like I knew like deep inside my 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 body, my soul, my heart, like she wanted to make sure that I'm good. I experienced that. He comes into the world and um and I was so thankful at her wake. I was like, wow, like thank you for like holding on. So I just intuitively believe that they know. Yeah. Like people really know. It's That's wild. intuition. Uh, for, for, I didn't know about your grandmother, by the way. I'm sorry about that. Appreciate it. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Um, just, I mean, just what you're talking about right now, like, why it's really weird. I, I probably actually, I've never told this story. My, um, when we first found out, my dad uh, had stage four lung cancer, right? I'm trying to, like, you know, we kind of go through all the emotions, et cetera. Now it's just kind of me and him talking. You know, he's very upset, whatever. And um, at that time, I wasn't with my wife, right? Like, uh, so I was single at that time. And uh, I said to my dad to kind of lighten the mood, you know, because he was like, you know, he was writing his will and doing all this stuff and like getting crazy panicked, whatever. So I said to my dad at the time, jokingly, I was like, Dad, what do you, I was like, come on. Um, I was like, you have to stick around for my wedding, right? But I was a single guy at the time. He started his, it was the only time he started laughing, right? <laughs> <laughs> like, legitimately started like hysterical laughing. I was like, this, I was like, the only time I could get a smile out of this guy <laughs> is when we're joking about me getting married, right? So, uh, so I truly believe too that when my wife came back into my life, we got engaged. Um, he literally fought and waited for the wedding, mm. and then he just couldn't fight anymore. And I think he was the type of man who was super, super quiet, kept himself. You didn't really get much out of him in terms of like what he was thinking, etc. The opposite of the four of us. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. uh, but uh, I think he just literally was in a lot of pain and didn't really tell anybody. If you look back at the wedding video and stuff now, like I see it a little bit in terms of like how he's moving around a little bit. I see it in his face, like the amount of pain that he was in. And just to go along with what you're saying, like I truly think like he held on as long as he could um, and then just got to the wedding. And I think in your head too, when you're kind of sick like that, I think like having that stuff to look forward to kind of keeps you moving a little yeah, bit. Yeah, absolutely. You know? Yeah. Um, and I think that's what it was for him. Like I, you know, we, we talked about it now. Um, and I'm, I'm actually thankful again, like me and my wife, we're going to do possibly like the year engagement and, you know, however long, a year and a half for the wedding. We kind of did everything in six months and it worked out perfectly. And the fact that we have pictures and stuff from him for the wedding was just awesome. So, Absolutely. you know, but I, I definitely think like having something to keep going is, is a I, big I texted deal. you that, right? You did. When, when you that did. happened, you I did. I intuitively knew. Matt yeah. said the same thing. Andy said the same thing. I intuitively knew, and um, I believe that. And as people look forward to something, they have a marker in their mind. They set that date, and then I've heard that you know once that marker hits, it's about putting another marker in front of it. But that was like the ultimate marker yeah. for some people. That's why I feel that they intuitively know. It's so powerful, and like you love the person that much more. You're so thankful for them. I just saw John Wick 4, so when you say marker, my mind instantly goes to... Have you seen John oh, Wick? Oh, no, I didn't know it was out, dude. but I want to. I'm pretty pumped right now. So you've seen, you've seen John Wick, he's any bad. of them. Yeah, he's badass. So you know what a marker is. Yeah. Um, remind me. Remind a marker me. is like that little gold oh, uh, yes, thing where yes. they take your blood and then you have like a contract to kill. So, so you're saying marker, and my mind's instantly going to that. My, uh, I always go back to in that movie, Excommunicado. Yes. Whenever anybody well, he, does something wrong, I'm always like, dude, excommunicado ex from the group. <laughs> Get that guy out of here. Yeah, man. Great movie, by the way. But I'm, I'm curious to go around the table here just to talk about like a moment where your intuition guided you to something, someone, etc. I know that we've kind of touched on it, but like, where do you feel like intuition has stepped up in your life recently or maybe in the most monumental way you've seen? In regards to meeting somebody? No, just in general. Like it could be anything. Like I know I know what mine is. Oh, okay. Alright, I have a I have one that we said on this show before. Um so and I actually I sent you a voice note about this earlier. Sometimes the best nights or days out are times where you really don't want to go and for whatever reason you push yourself to go. Mm. Something inside you like, ah, I really don't want to attend this, but I'm going to do it. Some of the most fun nights I've ever had. I've met some of the best people that way. And you'll be very <laughs> familiar with the story is, um, I remember I was trying to grow my business and I was trying to find people to get plugged into and a friend, actually I hadn't even met him. He wasn't even a friend at that point. I met some uh, person that worked for, uh, 
a Greek tech company. Uh, and we met for the first time and we were just kind of just going over things. And he's like, hey, I think there's someone that could help you in your business. Um, you should reach out to him. And it's funny, I ended up being Matt. And I'd never met Matt oh. before. Yeah, so he's like, get in touch with this guy. And we spoke on the phone. I'm like, oh, this guy seems like a really like straight shooter, very interesting. And we we're talking about potentially working together. And Matt sends me an email, just like, hey, nice, you know, follow up email, nice talking to you, whatever. The next day I had an event, it was a CUNY event. I did not want to go to this. I woke up that morning and I was like, I kind of just want to go to the gym. I don't want to really go. But I went and I forced myself to go last minute. I went, anyways, I get to the event, I go on an elevator. And this giant guy next to me wearing a FUBU hat <laughs> is, this is the next day. And I'm like, what the fuck? I'm like, I haven't seen a FUBU hat in a really long time. And Matt, when he sent me that email, had, and we hadn't really seen it much at the time. Now it's common. He had the signature with your picture at the bottom. So I'm like, why do I know this guy? And on the elevator, I'm like, I peek. I'm like, oh, I think that's him. <laughs> so, so we end up going to this event. I turn around, I'm like, are you Matt? He's like, actually I am. I'm like, dude, we spoke on the phone yesterday and it was just so mind blowing. They were in the same place at the same time, an event I almost didn't go to, yet intuition brought me there. And now one of my best friends, we get to do things like this. You know, we become like this family and that wouldn't happen if my intuition didn't lead me there. So I find it so crazy how sometimes you're just like, mm -hmm. something guided me to just go and yeah. truly it changed my life. I have a friend and I have like three new brothers because of that. That wouldn't have happened if I didn't go that day. So that's pretty wild. And I'm not just saying that because he's the host of the show. <laughs> but I think that very no, that, I, whenever I think about that, dude, it's like a crazy right. fucking story. Really you know? wild. It's, yeah. um, it's so interesting to see how like life brings us together. You know, uh, we just, we, we have the people we need in our life. And if not yet, they're coming, you know, it's just right. like, I wonder what we're going to be doing in the next life. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well, hopefully we, we graduate you know what, to the I, next you know what level. actually i wanted to ask has anyone done hypnosis uh no i haven't i feel like i got like a janky version of it like a couple times this from, sounds this sounds shady yeah i mean I, I was working with this guy um I honestly forget his name. He's based in Long Island. He was doing some like EMDR therapy, which is like eye movement destigmatization or whatever the fuck it's called. Okay, I remember you doing that. Yeah, and um, I was like, hey, like, you know, you mentioned hypnosis and I just felt like it wasn't really hypnosis because I was just like, is something supposed to happen? Like I was kind of just there and yeah. like I didn't feel loopy or, or maybe I don't know what hypnosis is enough to speak on it like that, but uh, maybe there's I had resistance it. there too. Oh yeah, there definitely was a hundred percent. You know, I love control. I absolutely <laughs> <laughs> I'm the first one to admit it. I, in fact, I was on a call earlier today and uh, I was on the call with this woman named Annalena. She has a really good podcast around human design and I'm not too educated on the topic of human design, but she pulled up my chart and she pointed out that she sees that I like control. And I said, yeah, I try and change that. And she actually really brought a, a beautiful perspective to the table. She was like, why are you trying to change who you are? Like, why don't you accept who you are and just accept the fact that you like control? Like a sure. lot of us like control. Like, how about you surrender? Instead of trying to surrender your control, how about you surrender to the fact that you like control? Yeah. Um, I think that was like a really good yeah, perspective. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of like being self-aware, right? And just 100%. Just kind of knowing who you are. I think what I struggle with a lot is um, being like a creature of my routines. And then what happens, like I'm, I've slowly been adjusting to, I see you kind of nodding over there because yeah, I feel I like you. you're the same way, right? It's like I even heard, it's funny, I heard Russell Brand say this recently where it's like, I just need to do uh, 20 minutes of meditation, do a cold plunge, 20 minutes of a sauna, do a morning workout of jujitsu, uh, it's like, and then, uh, and then I'm good after that. It's like, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, you like, and I'm the, yes. I, I get, I wake up in the morning. It's like, all right, I have to, I wake up. I kind of have the same routine. I have to walk the dogs. I try to get my direct sunlight. I try to look into the sun, right? I try to, uh, meditate if I can. I try to do a cold shower. I try to work out if I can, but then like you throw in like a eight o'clock meeting into the mix right. and I'm like up and I don't know what to do and I'm all thrown off mm -hmm. and like, I'm slowly trying to like adjust to, and just kind of learn to go more with the flow and also like not be upset that like I wasn't able to, and like the world isn't gonna fall apart. I'm not gonna have a terrible meeting, sales meeting, because I 
didn't meditate or because I didn't take my cold shower. You yeah. know, like I'm, I try. That's like what I've been struggling with, and I've slowly realized like that it's okay to kind of like be okay with that. I mean, yeah. do you feel yeah. the same oh, way? Or I no? 100% feel that way. If, if there's things missing from the check boxes, I feel it. Like I even did meditation before I came here. I'm like, I didn't get it in today, and I really need to do it. It wasn't a good one. I was like, well, you're supposed to, you know, like kind of surrender to the moment and just let your mind go. And I was just like, well, the traffic is going to be 30 minutes. Like I couldn't really get in the zone. But sometimes doing something is better than nothing for sure. And even though it wasn't a good one, I'm like, you know what? It, it's fine. I, I could do it later tonight if I need to. But I, I'm very much that way too with. Making sure you know I'm a checkbox guy. I have li- yeah. So I have, there's a list in here right now. Yeah. Actually. Checkbox. <laughs> I have checkboxes check too, and I never do that all, <laughs> all day. So yeah, no, I, I feel. You. I always I always bring a notepad to these because you two do, and all I wrote down was many lives, many masters. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only that might be all you I'm need. gonna have throughout this entire thing, <laughs> but I feel like I have to. You know? No, no, yeah. it's it's clutch to have. <laughs> um, we only have a few minutes left, so I'm curious from the two of you, like, where do you feel? intuition popped up in your life in the most monumental way or recently so recently in a big way i just did a it just took a huge transition as you guys know moved from new york to north jersey um new father of my son parent to my partner's uh children as well so we got a full house we got a family of six now and um don't know anyone out there don't know anyone out there in new jersey but i do believe myself whenever you put me somewhere i'll always figure out how to make friends and I'll, I'll always figure out how to make money so i'm out there and i'm struggling i really am i like you're a brand new father you you know you gotta you gotta be at the house you gotta take care of the family the woman everything but i was i didn't have that social connection and especially a line social connection that I, I really desire so um just before luca was born go to the uh the church down the block Um, just saying a prayer he's born go back the next week and uh, actually unintentionally went there I just was feeling off and decided I'm going to go say a prayer randomly on a Saturday morning at 730 and I'm actually praying St. Joseph I'm praying to him at that point you know how you go through stuff but you don't really realize what you're going through until you go through it yeah I realized at that point at least in, in the story of, of, of Jesus and everything. Bro, you are the most... I looked at his statue and I said, you are the most underrated guy in this whole church. Mm. I said, because you, you're you the father, you're the parent of Jesus. Your woman had a, a child and when you, she was pregnant and you were raising him, like people probably looked at you and was like, bro, are you serious? This girl cheated on you. Like, are you... Are you like, what's wrong with you? You know? And it could be very thankless at times. Well, I prayed to him and I said, you know, help me. I'm a new father, parent, you know, guide me. I walked, to, I walk out of the back of the church in a, in an angle that I never go to. And a guy, you know, comes up to me and he was, he was just glowing. He looked like he left a Tony Robbins event, to, literally. And he just, we just start talking about life, everything. Fast forward, he invites me to their, basically it's a brotherhood. It's a faith-based brotherhood. And he invites me to a retreat that normally I wouldn't have gone to unless he gave me the personal invite. And I just knew intuitively. I wasn't I wasn't planning on being at church that day. I wasn't planning to speak to St. Joseph that day. I wasn't planning to walk out this exit that day. But the energy and the alignment took me in a path that I needed to be in. I needed this so bad because when I went, uh, I not only you know deepened my faith, but... I met 65 other gentlemen who are now all my friends and I have their phone numbers. Mm. And like in a, in, in a matter of a day, now I have that aligned social connection that I didn't have before and I have a foundation. So like I intuitively, intuitively knew like don't, this is for you and whatever, you know, spirit or <clears throat> religions you believe in, I just know that I was meant to be there. And uh, I honestly, like I could cry thinking about how just amazing that is. And I had a beautiful time. So. I love you know, that, that. That was more recently. That's but. awesome. That's powerful. We have a few minutes left. Drew, you could squeeze something in here? Yeah, I'll do uh, real quick. Um, I mean, I feel like uh, in terms of intuition, I feel like uh, I'm pretty good at listening to like, let's call it the third eye, right? Whether it was the intuition to tell me to start my own company, small things like who to hire, who not to hire have always worked out. Um, even like the fact of like me going to a certain, to a party, 
running into my wife at the time, getting back together, trusting that instinct. But most recently, to even tie it all back to what I was kind of talking about earlier, the day my father passed, we, were, we had been taking turns going to the hospital throughout the entire week. Um, and he was having like some stomach pain from the internal bleeding, um, which we didn't know at the time, right? We just thought he was just having some stomach pain. I was in between moving from the city out to Long Island. Um, so I actually was gonna, I had left my mom, said goodbye to my dad, told him I loved him, whatever, and then I was gonna leave. Um, and I was gonna head back home because I was gonna come back to the hospital in the morning, leave my mom there, whatever. Um, so now I leave. Instead of going out to Brooklyn, I was like, you know what? Let me head back to um, Long Island. I'm just gonna check on something at the house. Like a weird feeling gave me that. I was gonna go back into the city. Then um, my mom texted me. She's like, your dad still doesn't feel good. Like, you know, I'm a little, I don't know. Like she just said something's off. So I was like, like it was the intuition to tell me not to go back into the city. Cause if I went back to the city, there's a chance I might not have turned around. Um, I went out to Long Island, turned back around, came back. And that was when my dad actually coded in front of us. And I'm just thank Holy I'm shit. so thankful that I listened to my intuition and went back because I can't imagine if my mom was there alone having mm -hmm. to deal with that while they were working on my dad and fucking cold blue and the, the, the fucking 20 people coming in the room and her by herself. Um, so like, I'm just, I'm just thankful that I listened to my intuition to, to head back. And it was just a weird feeling that I had, like something's, you know, like something's off. Like no one knew what was going on. It was like, it was completely fine, but I just knew I had to go back and I was just happy and thankful that I actually did. So I was there for my mom. It's the power of intuition, man. Yeah. Without and a about doubt. about yourself? Yeah. Uh, we only have one minute here, so oh, I'll, shit, I'll squeeze. Bad. No, 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 you're good. You're good. I mean, we've been talking this whole time. Um, super random, but it actually happened straight out of a dream, right? I, I, I woke up, not frantically, but like kind of popped up. It happened at 6 a.m. I literally remember it was 6 a.m. on the dot in July of 2020. And as I popped up, the first thing, I, I literally heard it inside of myself. And it simply said, she's not the one. Cool. <laughs> Damn. And I was like, holy shit. Because I was in resistance to continue to stay in a relationship where I wasn't being treated well. And literally intuition spoke to me in that moment. It was just like, dude, like, listen to me. Listen to your gut right now. It still took me some time after that to actually listen because I'm just a hard-headed, stubborn New Yorker, uh, millennial, all of that. But ultimately, I felt like that was the that was the most clear my intuition's ever been to me. Like, actually, could hear the voice of my intuition, and that radically shifted my life for the better. You know, but that that was it. Um, I, I don't want to go over any more time because I know that we already have. So on this note, fellas, first and foremost, I want to thank the three of you. For being here being transparent showing up vulnerable showing up like true gentlemen i really just wanted to say thank you to all of you guys for for being a part of this um for everyone out there again like if you love these episodes make sure you let us know we want to give you more uh we could be in the studio once a month four times a week like you let us know what you want to hear from the round tables uh we have a blast doing it again these episodes are totally free make sure that you're sharing them with the people in your life if you want to check it out on YouTube, you could do so. We have three camera angles going right now. So the it's all up on YouTube. And lastly, shout out to Proper Sleep and Talkify for hooking the show up and hooking you guys up as well. Make sure you check out the other episodes to hear what they're offering. But fellas, appreciate it, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you, fellas. Awesome. Born in 92 on the block with the sharks. Come from a different cloth. Y'all would get ripped apart. You want a diamond, then you got to get it in the dark. We dropping nuggets like Carmelo with the rock.